Hi, Glenn Crowder here. Thank you very much for listening to Head for the Hills, all brought to you by our good friends at eWool. They have a product that nobody else, believe me. And we're going to do local stuff and destination this entire season. We are so looking forward to it, and I'm so looking forward to talking to you over the next five months. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. An original. From Story Studio Network. Look at that. We blink and we're nearly halfway through December already. Can't believe how fast it right? goes, Dave. Can't, no it's kidding. Unreal. Yeah. <laughs> we just got the boards on and all of a sudden we're looking at, oh my goodness, we're already finished. Glenn Crowder here. I'm Dave Trafford. This is Head for the Hills Season 2. And uh, if you're just joining us, you want to jump into last week's show, uh, all talking all about the, the new amenities at Mount St. Louis Moonstone. Uh, you know what? I'm just glad that they're able to kind of stand up a resort full season finally. You know, Robert and his team are obviously excited, but I thought it was interesting he was talking about the need for staff. So if you're looking for, for work up in that part of the world, maybe Dave, there's something there. Was, absolutely. You know, that was the problem again last year. And that's not just locally here in Ontario. It's right across the board, uh, not only in uh, the States, but Canada West. Um, Banff, uh, certainly a visit out there earlier. I uh, saw the BC, the same thing. They're all looking for really good help. And you know what? You don't even have to be tremendous at it. They'll teach you how to do it. And also, by the way, this is a huge bonus. You get to have free skiing. So that's a pretty good deal. That's worth about a thousand some odd dollars all in itself. Yeah. And, and you know, the, 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 the jobs out there, um, it sounded like their whole new hospitality uh, offering is really, they've upped their game there. So you're kind of working in an elite environment even there, right? Yeah, really. Mount St. Louis Moonstone, they've, they've always been the leader in a number of areas and hiring this catering company just put them that much better. And and the really cool part about it is, and a lot of the resort operators can understand it, and I believe it's called chair surfing, as our next guest uh, describes. Some of the people that come out and the kids go out skiing, they sit in the chalet. They deserve a good meal and deserve to have some fun as well, not just because they can't go out on the hills, but inside. So if they can have some wonderful options, and uh, as you mentioned, ramen, they've got all sorts of uh, schnitzels and things things like that. So they've really upped their game and uh, and people are really excited about it. I know for, I was, I had a Nathan's hot dog, a foot long, pretty good, man. I like it. So you just kept to one Nathan's just so that the e-wool vest didn't get too snug? Is that, <laughs> exactly. You got to be careful with that e-wool vest. <laughs> it does have a little spandex on the side, but we didn't want to push it too much. Yeah, so Ewell is a sponsor of the program, and we thank them for their uh, their involvement here. And, you know, I know we talked about this last season because they jumped on the show right away, but um, the idea that, you know, I can kind of go out and be comfortable for a, a long period of time, whether I'm on the slopes, on the skidoo, um, you know, my son's an ice fisherman. He loves to do that, sits out there in the middle of the lake. Um, I can think that there's a lot of folks who would be uh, pretty excited about uh, taking advantage of that. There's no restriction to where you're going to wear this vest. Uh, I, again, I have a friend, she's in equestrian riding, so she's in the, on her horse. Uh, and the great thing about it, I've said this before, you don't need the Michelin look, the big jacket, the big puffy jacket to keep warm. All you need to do is just have a simple jacket and you have a nice, sun, uh, I'm not going to say an undershirt, but certainly a turtleneck, a light turtleneck you can put underneath and then the e wool on top and you'll be warm for the rest of the day. And I kid you not. And not only just skiing because you get create your body heat when you ski, but also the real part where you get cool, standing in line and then going up on the lifts. That's where you get cool. And this is where this mm-hmm. e wool vest really comes in handy. So if you want more information, check out their website, ewool.com. It's ewool pro technology. This is SSN. All right, last uh, week we were, uh, but uh, as we mentioned, talking to the folks at Mount St. Louis Moonstone. Let's head down to uh, southwestern Ontario, to London, Ontario, and uh, we've got a, who's your guest, Glenn? Have Marty Thody. He's the uh, director of operations for Boulder Mountain in London. Now, I'll be the first. And we talked about this uh, the other day, Marty, when we chatted just about the fact I never thought about heading west, except to the Rockies and Banff and Alberta, and certainly out to BC when I think about skiing. But uh, I'm really taken back by what the operations that you have at Boulder Mountain out in uh, London, Ontario. Yeah, well, thanks. It's uh, been an operation since uh, 1946, so we're just heading into our 76th year here at Boulder Mountain, and uh, I'm honored to keep uh, keep going what uh, 
what our founders built uh, way back when. Marty, when I think about uh, Boulder Mountain, uh, I, I saw some pictures and it looked like, and I even mentioned this because I did an article in the Toronto Sun about it, uh, and we're going to talk about your snowmaking in a second, but it reminded me of a golf course, and I'm a golfer, where you're kind of in amongst a residential area. That, that's got to be pretty crazy and pretty cool, but you mentioned it's been around so long that there was no homes there when they first started. Yeah, that's right. Even when I started, they, they were just creeping out this way. And then uh, in the last few years, they just built right around the property uh, that we have. We have uh, just over 120 acres here. And uh, I think we uh, were in production, snow production on about 40 of those acres. Wow, that's incredible. Now, if I'm coming into London, where do I find you? Mm-hmm. We're in the West End. So you would, uh, if you're coming from Toronto, you would uh, you know, head on west and come Come in on the 402 and uh, and follow the signs in. We have uh, highway signs that lead you right into the property. Wow. Now, what we wanted to bring you on, because I, I can probably say this, and I said this in the Toronto Sun, the world is kind of watching uh, Boulder Mountain huh? uh, in London, Ontario. Little resort in the middle of London, Ontario. You've got the world looking because you have something that is... Well, certainly there's nobody else in Canada that has this. So can you tell us a little bit about this unique snowmaking? Because it is revolutionary, and this could really be a game changer for not only Ontario, but for skiing around the world. Sure, yeah. We were uh, we had the uh, uh, honor of uh, purchasing and installing this year a positive temperature snowmaking system. So it's, uh, it's a unit that uh, we picked a location at the top of uh, our West Hill that... Uh, you know, is challenged by some very high winds and uh, and it sees a lot of sun and it's just a really unprotected uh, hill. So uh, we chose that spot um, to put this positive temperature unit in and it will make snow, you know, from, from plus 25 to, uh, to minus 10. And, so uh, ex- explain to me what the positive temperature part of this is. What is that? Is that, what's that what makes it unique? It, it's unique that, yeah, we're making snow when... Uh, you know, when you could be out skiing and or out golfing in a pair of shorts, you know. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, positive That's for you for sure. Ordinarily, <laughs> minus five, minus five is what resort operators, the kind of the Bible, minus five, they can make their own snow and they'd like a you know, few consistent days. But Marty, you sent me a picture and there was grass and it looked like it was summertime and you had these huge mounds of snow. I don't understand how you can, and this is this, is this synthetic snow? No, it's not. It's natural uh, product. It it uh, it's a little different in in how it's produced. It it, it goes through a refrigeration unit. Uh, it goes onto a some rollers that uh, snap the water frozen from uh, our water is coming in right now about forty five degrees, and uh, and it takes that down to uh, minus twenty five. So the snowflake that comes out or the ice flake that comes out of the machine is almost like a dendrite. It's very, very dry droplet, that, that, uh, and it's a flat uh, surface droplet that, uh, you know, once it's out there and piled up, it will change state many times. And uh, um, the piles that, are, that, are, that we're building up right now look uh, very impressive, and uh, we're hoping to push them out here shortly in the next couple of days. So where'd the technology come from? Well, you know, the technology uh, was originally used uh, for uh, helping to cure concrete in Saudi, so it didn't heat up too much. And uh, wow. and uh, actually, the folks that that built this one, um, they would build refrigeration units for the largest uh, grocer train in 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 Europe. And and you know, by accident, they occasionally made a bit of snow or this this type of product. Uh, as they were setting up the unit, they they realized that there were other applications to the refrigeration units they were they were building, and and uh, this is the uh, the direction that they decided to take their company in, and uh, and it's a family you know family owned operation, the we portion in in France, and they partnered up with HKD, uh, who manufacture out of uh, uh, Quebec. I've driven that four hundred two stretch more than I care to mention. And in the winter, it can go from bright and sunny to just blizzards sideways. So um, I can see how the, the how changeable the weather is. When you get snow, you get serious snow, but it can get swings in there. So I can see how this is stabilizing things for you guys throughout a season then. 
Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I mean, like Glenn said, uh, we production snow ideally is made at minus five. Our, I would say, I'd have to run the stats again, but 80% probably of our production snow is made at minus two to wow. minus five now. And uh, when I first started in the industry, I, you know, I've been lucky enough to have worked here for many years now. And uh, we wouldn't start until the temperature was, uh, was minus five and dropping. And, uh, and now we start right at minus two. And sometimes we stay there. Like it never gets colder, but um, uh, it, it, we just, we see the writing on the wall, I guess. And unfortunately, um, and we, we've come close three seasons out of the last five where we couldn't offer all of our terrain up uh, when our programs began. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're located right in a residential neighborhood of London, so we have, we're program heavy. Uh, we introduce a lot of people to the sport and we really rely on, on running these programs. And uh, yeah, we were, we were awful close last year to not being able to offer up enough terrain to support a program, so. Yeah, I was looking at your list of uh, offerings there from the snowboards. You got the program for the kids age five and six, uh, you know, and, and to me, you know, it kind of reminds me, Glenn, of, you know, the, 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 the hill at Earl Bales Park here in Toronto, yeah. where it's in a residential area. So it's the kind of thing where you're probably more, I mean, not, you, you can correct me, uh, Marty, certainly, but probably more likely to be uh, accessible to say school groups or that kind of thing, as, as opposed to making a, you know, an hour and a half long bus trip from Toronto up into uh, central Ontario. A hundred percent. And especially Earl Bales, because you can get there by bus. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as London's concerned, right in a residential area, and you've got 400 employees, which is really impressive. Um, so you're obviously a major employer in the area. So keeping snow is a fantastic idea. Now, just how much is this equipment? Because, uh, you know, you're the only one in Canada that has it. So are you a trailblazer or are you just able to afford this, uh, this piece of equipment? <laughs> well, I, I mean, we're nothing without snow. So, I, I, you know, you can... You can monetize it that way. So if we were unable to offer the programs and unable to employ these people, and you know, there's it, the building the business case scenario. We've been we've been watching these uh, this technology for a number of years, knowing that we we you know definitely we're going to have to invest in it, and the uh, efficiency of this technology has come way up. But to get down to the price, it was a million dollars, and uh, it, you know it's. Uh, it has a uh, probably a six or seven year payback to it, but yeah, like I said, yeah. not being open and and not being able to employ these kids, and uh, it, a lot of the stuff that we are able to do is a not for profit. You know, nobody's going home uh, or nobody's filling their boots at the end of the season. It's all going right back into the operation, and uh, our volunteer board gets to leave a lifelong legacy of the reinvestment in the club. Yeah, and and that's that's kind of critical in so many levels in terms of you know that 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 community asset almost where you're you know making the sport that much more accessible to kids who might not otherwise be able to enjoy it. Yeah, we're we're very fortunate here. We also run uh, um, one of the uh, largest adaptive skiing programs here, our Track Three ski program uh, out of London, and um, you know we. Um, we're grateful that we get to also offer uh, some programs to people who are unable to uh, otherwise uh, afford the sport or, or you know, they, they have different challenges. Um, and we run that, uh, you know, through Boulder Mountain. Sometimes we don't toot the horn about that, but uh, it's it's an honor to be able to run these programs and then also run our regular programs for, for, uh, for the rest of the folks of uh, southwestern Ontario. Marty, how do you think this season's going to be? Uh, uh, it's a little mild now. Uh, are you going to be operational in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, we're hoping to be able to, um, you know, offer up some uh, terrain here in the next week. And, uh, Perfect. And, uh, and keep adding a as we go on. Yeah. We're, you know, <laughs> it's a saying, one of the 
one of the sayings in the industry is uh you know i've been working in this industry for about 40 years now and i've never had a normal winter <laughs> <laughs> it's true welcome to it? canada yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true marty listen uh, marty thody is the operations uh, manager at uh, boulder mountain in london ontario i i've I have to apologize. I've never been there. This winter, I'm going to come and see you guys. I want to see this equipment for one, and I want to see the spot as well. And maybe we can share a, a beer, uh, if we're allowed to say that, a toddy, and uh, enjoy okay. ourselves and have a good uh, have a good laugh at what's been going on in the season. Sure, absolutely. And you get to see a lot of uh, you know new people uh, that are uh, taking up the sport here. Uh, that's that's what we do. Great, Marty. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Honored. Glenn, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Marty. Our technical producer and audio editor for Head for the Hills is Mike Trutler. Our production manager is Jamie Nickerson. Our executive producer is Aaron Trafford. And our sonic logo designer is Greg McDonald. I'm Dave Trafford. Thanks for listening. This is SSN.